Welcome back to Music Kingdom. In this video, we are listening to, giving a music theory breakdown for, and reviewing Just Good Friends, a somewhat forgotten duet between Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder from the album Bad. Hang tight. Hey music lovers, my name is Francis. If you'd like to support the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. All right, now before we give the song a listen, let's briefly talk context for Just Good Friends by Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. So I have this theory and I have absolutely no facts or information or data to support this theory, it's just a hunch, that um, the success of the Thriller album about five years prior, since Bad came out in 87, Thriller came out around 82, that they saw the massive success of it, and on that album was a gigantic success of a song called The Girl Is Mine, a duet between Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Now, the way history kind of looks back at that album, it's kind of a lot of people's least favorite songs, and I would highly recommend uh, Michael Jackson's original demo for The Girl Is Mine, which in my opinion is just so much better before Quincy Jones got his hands on it to produce it and before they put Paul McCartney's vocals in there. No shade to Paul McCartney, the man's a genius. I just don't really care for his singing voice all that much. Either way, still a tremendous success and obviously, evidently, an iconic album and an iconic song. So my theory goes that all these years later when they're in the recording sessions for Bad, they might want to duplicate the same thing and this time make it a duet between Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, who are longtime friends. Their friendship started in the early days of Motown when Stevie was still a teenager and Michael was a child. And their friendship lasted pretty much all the way until Michael's death in 2009. So it just made sense and to my knowledge, I think one of them owed the other a favor. Michael Jackson recorded a duet with Stevie Wonder on Stevie Wonder's own album, so I think that's kind of how this all started. And so, in addition to the other tracks they were already working on for the album Bad, the concept for Just Good Friends, the duet between Michael and Stevie, was born. Now, unfortunately, according to Quincy Jones himself, that song kind of became like an afterthought. And Quincy Jones, in hindsight, all these years later, looking back on the album Bad, looks at the song Just Good Friends as kind of this head-scratching, like, what were we thinking? Why did we do this? Why was this a good idea? And not even Michael, who adored Stevie Wonder, was necessarily thrilled about putting Just Good Friends on the final cut of the album either. Michael Jackson himself, to my knowledge, was rooting for a demo he recorded called Streetwalker. In my opinion, even though Streetwalker is technically an unfinished demo, I would still put it myself on the album over Just Good Friends. And I think the reason was, when you look at the rest of the album bad, which is considered to be a masterpiece, you have songs like Man in the Mirror, you have songs like Smooth Criminal, I Just Can't Stop Loving You, The Way You Make Me Feel, Speed Demon, Liberian Girl. Songs that before the album would eventually be released already look like they're going to be great hits, or if not that, that they're still very inspired works of art. And then you have a song like Just Good Friends, which in its own weird way, in my opinion and in Michael's opinion and in Quincy Jones' opinion, kind of has this generic 80s feel to it, where it doesn't really seem like a Michael song, it doesn't necessarily necessarily seem like a Quincy song, even though I'd say it's more of a Quincy song. It might even be more of an 80s Stevie Wonder song, because Stevie Wonder's work in the 80s kind of sounded a lot like Just Good Friends. So what you have is this artistic, creative masterpiece of an album with this kind of unfavorable sibling that made the final cut over Streetwalker. And then, of course, history tells, when people talk about the album Bad by Michael Jackson, one of the most iconic albums, influential albums, in the history of music, you rarely, if ever, hear mention of Just Good Friends. And therefore, in its own way, unless you're part of the big Michael Jackson fandom community, right? If you're a casual Michael listener, if you're a casual music listener, it's really not a very memorable song. It kind of, in its own way, has gotten lost in history. And in my own subjective opinion, I do think the song is good because it's very rare that Michael Jackson would ever make a bad song. However, it's not one that I listen to a whole lot from that album anyway. I don't think it's up to the artistic or creative standard that Michael Jackson set for himself. But either way, it's time to give the song a listen so that you can decide for yourself and be sure to stick around after the song for a music theory breakdown from our expert. And then we're gonna break the song into different categories and give it an overall score. It already sounds so 80s. <laughs> Although I love that drum smash.
ad libs on point. Always. There's already so much sauce. Stank. What a voice he has in every freaking song. He's just like, wow. So A's. It is a very sharp production. You gotta take your mind, never trust. What a voice too. From their suspicions. So even if she's asking you to stay. Such a smooth voice, like you butter. It is a really fun song. Like, I'm obviously enjoying myself. It is lyrically kind of similar to The Girl Is Mine, though. In a way. <laughs> Lovely bridge. Change. Key changes don't happen a lot anymore. What a voice. I love the scratch. What a strong finish, too. It is a fun song. That's the thing. Like, I have all these opinions, and then I hear it, and I'm like, well, man. Initial thoughts better than you remember it being when it's been a long time since you've listened to it. Evidently, I had a blast listening to that song. And a lot of my feelings about it are still the same. One of the first things that comes to mind when I think about the song or when I listen to the song is that Michael and Stevie's vocal on that track is so good. And I almost wish that someone out there would isolate their vocals in the studio and basically renovate or redo or modernize the rest of the song. Is the rest of the song bad? Absolutely not, pun intended, by the way. It is not a bad song by any stretch. However, it's very, very dated, and that's not always a bad thing. I mean, why do we listen to music from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, etc.? Because it sounds like that, and so that means that being dated can be very much a good thing. However, when it comes to the 1980s specifically, subjectively speaking, there are times when, uh, in my opinion, some songs are dated in a bad way. Another example of that would be the song Another Part of Me. Lyrically, I think it's one of the best songs he wrote in his entire life, by the way. But the synth, the 80s sound, it's hard for me to get into something when it sounds so cliche 80s in a bad way. But regardless, having said all of that, in many ways the song is still exceptionally redeemable and in other ways, it's not. But before I can break the song into different categories and get specific with each different aspect of the song arriving at an overall score, let's first go to the expert's corner for a music theory breakdown and to hear what he has to say.
Welcome to the Experts Corner. This is Just Good Friends by Michael Jackson featuring Stevie Wonder. This song is in the time signature of 4-4 and it's in the key of E major. However, towards the end, there is a key change and it goes to F sharp major. So in preparation for this video, I was kind of analyzing the chords, listening to the music theory parts of it, and it blew me away. This song is crazy. There's jazzy chords all over the place, super complex progressions. It really surprised me because I thought I knew this song. I even had to use a YouTube tutorial to figure out some of the chords in this song. Let me just show you a couple of my favorite parts because there's way too much to cover throughout the whole song. In the verses, we have E major, G major, D over A, A over B, and just repeat that, G, D over A, A over B. That's the gist of the verses. The pre-chorus is what really blew my mind. So you have C major 7, F sharp dominant 7, B minor 7, and then the four chords leading right into the chorus. I'll show it to you slowly first, these four chords, and then I'll show them to you in action. So you have G over D, D major, A over B, B over C sharp. So in action, that sounds like... And then... So good. So good. So having just learned all of this, I do have a newfound appreciation for the composition of this song. However, this has never been one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs. In fact, if you'd asked me yesterday, I would have told you this is one of my least favorite Michael Jackson songs. I mean, there's a lot of great things about it. The vocals of both Michael and Stevie are wonderful. The composition, as I just found out, is incredible. However, it's just so aged. Plenty of Michael Jackson's songs are timeless. They're ageless. You can put them on. They sound amazing. This one is not that way. It is probably the most 80s sounding song I can possibly think of. And I've just never been a fan. So originally my score for this song probably would have been pretty low. However, in light of all the good things that do exist about this song, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Back to you, Francis. A very special thank you to our expert for providing a music theory breakdown and giving the song a humble six out of 10. But worry not, we now have five more categories in addition to that one to grade the song and specifically arriving at an overall song score. Starting out with composition specifically, I'm scoring it an eight out of 10, which is very strong. Now I'm assuming our musical expert already talked at length about the composition. I have yet to see his segment. I usually record my takes and then I see his after the fact, but I am going to assume that he touched on how the composition is better than one would think when listening to a song that has such, at least on the surface level, has such a radio friendly, generic bop feel to it. In addition to literal compositional structure, let's now talk about the melody, which in my opinion is really the strong point of this song's overall composition. The way Michael and Stevie Wonder would give the song even more juice, even more creativity, and even more artistry with how they decided to use their voices over the instrumental track. In my opinion, while the composition is strong enough by itself, I would much rather listen to the song with them in it versus just an instrumental version, which kind of makes my point of how compositionally and melodically speaking, that gives even more bonus points. So while I would be inclined to give its overall composition maybe an above average six or seven, I'm gonna bump it up as mentioned, yes, two and eight because as a whole package, it absolutely delivers. Moving on to production, this for me was the hardest one to score, but even still, I am arriving at a 7.5 out of 10, which is essentially as good as you can get without technically being great. Because in my head, eights, nines, and tens are great, better than great, and perfection, right? And the reason I'm arriving at a seven and a half, but not with the most confidence or conviction in the world, is because it is, kind of hard to evaluate something that is dated, as I mentioned. And I know I've talked at length about how it sounds dated. I really don't mean to be redundant about that. And I am trying to stop myself because let's say I'm reviewing a car and everything about the car is great. There's, there's wood trim, there's leather, it's a gorgeous design, but because the car is 30 or 40 years old, it's not gonna go from zero to 60 miles per hour in under 10 seconds. So I feel like it would be mean for me to hold that against it in relation to this song and that being its production. So what I will say is for its time in 1987, 
this was a very sharp, solid production. Now, the downside to that is other songs that do sound dated are still better productions, and they kind of stand the test of time better than other songs like this one. For example, let's say you're listening to the song Man in the Mirror. You can tell by listening to Man in the Mirror that this is an 80s song, but it had such a more tasteful and better overall production to where, yes, you're listening to it now, you know it's older, but it holds up because it's so well done. This song, Just Good Friends, is good for its time, but it doesn't really hold up because it's just not as good. However, as mentioned, it is still good enough to get a seven and a half in my opinion. I do love the usage of the ad-libs. I do love the usage of the harmonies, the guitar usage as well, the touches of horns. While it all sounds super 80s, it is still sophisticated and still very well done. Up next, we have vocals, which I am giving an exceptionally rare nine and a half out of 10, which is tied for the highest score of any category I have ever given on this channel. And granted, this channel is still relatively new and we don't have a ton of videos, but even still, I so sparingly give out anything that is a nine or above. Now, why is this? Simple answer, you're getting two of the greatest vocalists in the history of the music industry on one song. Now, beneath the basic answer, if we're getting a bit more specific with it, Michael Jackson's voice at this point. While I am partial to his voice in the 90s and beyond, this was such a great, era of his voice because prior to the album Bad, you had a more smooth, silky, buttery Michael Jackson voice of the off the wall era and the thriller era. And then in the dangerous and history and eventually invincible eras, Michael's voice became, while he could still be very smooth with it, sharper and grittier. And it would sound like more of a rock and roll voice. So in this era of the Bad album and the recording sessions, Michael's voice was maturing and evolving in a way that still had both. And this song is an exceptional example of how Michael could still hit these amazing high ad-libs in his falsetto, could still deliver a buttery, silky smooth vibrato while bringing a certain scratch and power and sharpness to his voice all over the song. In addition to all of that, vocally speaking, it is a very versatile song, and that's what I look for when I'm giving nines or aboves regarding vocals in songs. In order to get a nine, a nine and a half, or a 10 in one song, you need to have falsetto, you need to have vocal runs, you need to have basically versatility, the ability to belt very high keys with perfection, and basically do all kinds of things in one single song. And in my opinion, between the two of them, this song has basically everything you're looking for vocally. Now, one final thought, and this might be my own subjectivity, feel free to call me out for being biased in the comments below. But as amazing as Stevie Wonder's voice is, he is Stevie Wonder after all. He is music royalty. The contrast of him and Michael Jackson in the same song, again, this could be biased to me, highlights that Michael Jackson even still was a better vocalist than Stevie Wonder. Am I being way too subjective? Probably, but whenever it goes back from Stevie to Michael Jackson, I'm just like, oh my God, this voice. Now, if Michael were here, he probably wouldn't want me saying that about Stevie Wonder because Michael was Team Stevie all the way. He'd probably say something like, do not disrespect Stevie. He's a musical prophet. Which I don't disagree with, but even still, having said all of that, nine and a half, out of 10, without a doubt. Now, moving on to the category of lyrics, bringing us back down to earth, I am giving the lyrics in this song a five out of 10, which is exactly middle of the road. First of all, Michael Jackson did not write this song, and that is not the first time Michael Jackson has not written a song. He didn't write Thriller, he didn't write Man in the Mirror, but if you're gonna get someone to write a song and they're not Michael Jackson, it better be an amazingly written song, and this one just isn't. Lyrically speaking, it is very, generic, bland, basic in my opinion. There's really nothing unique about the lyrics. You could copy and paste these lyrics into pretty much any song ever. Um, my baby loves me, though she never shows she cares, though she acts like I'm not there. It's clever, it's catchy, it rhymes, and it's fun, don't get me wrong, but I would argue that the reason the lyrics hit you so hard in the song, which they do, is not because the lyrics are good. It's because Michael and Stevie Wonder with their soul and their vocal ability could make any lyrics sound good. This song could literally be about doorknobs and Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder would absolutely make it the best song about doorknobs ever. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Lyrically, pretty average. And pretty average looks like a five out of 10. Now lastly, arriving at our final category of originality and or inspiration, I'm giving this category a four out of 10. And in my opinion, this category specifically is why the song 
kind of flopped, is why Michael wasn't a huge fan of it, it's why Quincy wasn't a huge fan of it, and it's why all of these years later, it's kind of forgotten, it's kind of unspoken, and again, I wanna preface this, I'm not talking about diehard Michael Jackson fans, I'm talking about music fans in general who are not going to die on a cross for Michael Jackson. This song is really not celebrated by any means. And in my opinion, back to the point, it is because it's not a very original song. It's not a very inspired song. You have songs like Man in the Mirror. You have songs like Smooth Criminal, such imaginative anthems that Michael and Quincy created together. You have songs like Another Part of Me. You have songs like Bad, which I'm not even a big fan of Bad, but I would never argue it wasn't original or inspired Liberian Girl, an absolute perfect work of art. In my opinion, the best song on the album. So those are all songs that have vision, that have inspiration, that are fresh, that are original, that are creative, that are artistic. And when you look at Just Good Friends, of all of the tracks on Bad, I would say this is perhaps the least in that realm. Even Speed Demon, which is not by any means the most incredible song, is still more original than Just Good Friends. So actually, I would be inclined to give its originality inspiration a two or a three out of 10, but the reason I'm bumping it up to a four is because it was still an original and inspired idea to put Michael and to put Stevie Wonder in the recording studio together and deliver a duet to all of us. That alone, in terms of ideas, right? Kind of is the saving grace of this category, kind of bumps it up. But even still, I, I can't confidently go above a four out of 10. So now if we add it all up, throw in the expert score and average it out. Just Good Friends by Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder from the 1987 album, Bad, gets a 6.8 out of 10. This one was certainly a wild ride. Some categories as amazing as an eight and a nine and a half, other categories as mediocre as a four or a five. So a 6.8 is a very interesting landing spot. And I feel it accurately reflects the mixed bag, the mixed emotions and the mixed feelings that this song is. When you're listening to it, it's very much like, oh my God, this is so amazing in some ways. And then otherwise it's like, Ugh, this is kind of bad in other ways. But even still, to put it in perspective, putting this on the lower echelon, I guess, of Michael Jackson songs, it still rounds up to a seven out of 10, which is good. It is hard to find a genuinely bad song in the five decades that Michael Jackson was making music. They are out there. I'm not too biased to say that he never made a bad song. They are out there. But this one is not bad. It's, it's just not great. And that's okay, because if I'm listening to the album Bad from start to finish, I'm still not skipping it. However, if I had it my way, I absolutely would put Streetwalker in place of Just Good Friends, and maybe it would have been an even more polished and finished version of Streetwalker as well. Either way, let me know if you enjoyed the song Just Good Friends, what your thoughts on the song are, if you would have maybe preferred Streetwalker, and as well, other songs you'd like for this channel to review next. As mentioned, if you'd like to support myself and the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links Thanks in the description below. This has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me, and I look forward to jamming with you in the next one.